Freaky Friday here at Cork Stats, powered by the Mayo Media Net here on YouTube and presented by Jock Market. Download the Daily Fantasy app and then use the promo code MMN. They're going to match the first 100 bucks for free, and if it's free, it's for us. We are going to close out strong, not just the week, not just the month, but the season itself. Man, we are down under a dozen episodes of the show, and I just can't, man, I can't stop thinking about, like, what am I going to do afterwards? I've done nothing but this, you know, and it's all because of you, the Cork Stats crew. Thank you so much, everybody, for all the participation, the integration, and the stimulation. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the audio only pod and in a few minutes once i've earned it i'm going to ask you to put your cartoon finger inside me up on youtube that little thumbs up button that matters more than it should but enough of that we need more of this it's the fastest show in mlb absolutely anywhere my goodness i'm telling you if anyone is even close in the race i think it's because we've lapped them at least once the one man band we're banging the drum we got the harmonica and now we're building a community around it that's beginning to include other handicappers and personalities content creators man this has just been amazing always 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 the hat tip to pat mayo the man behind the madness he is so cool and just lets me go right he opened the cage and said you you are the Tasmanian devil. You go get it. And, man, that's exactly what we've done. I hope you're enjoying it. We made some money again yesterday. It was a little bit flat, but it was better, right? Always palms up, greater than sign, palms down. The F5 totals were okay to us. The Royals, the one I liked the most, was a bit disappointing. But when you're hit beating up the plus 200 and eight parlays like we have been, that'll keep you going. And then, oh, yeah, the macho man got it done for us with the total base prop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Loving the show is coming off the rails and we wouldn't have it any other way. Like I said, under a dozen episodes left of Quark Stats, but that's okay. It's going to be the same big dude, the same big mouth from the same big city, baby, baby, as we make the full pivot into football. Not right at September because I am going to Disneyland on the back of these F5 team totals that I've been back testing. We're going to do some of those. All right, come on. Let's get into the three pillars of profit here at Cork Stats and all the nuance and context you could possibly stomach. Was This has become like a baseball academy. I actually had a follower DM me that. And I love that. Welcome to the Cork Stats Baseball Academy where, hey, listen, we are the sharpest tools. Let's get at it. It's the eight. 19 stack attack we're gonna run it back and stay in the black because losing is whack give me the cincinnati red legs today going up against bryce wilson he's not very good 593 era 151 whip 870 ops but the fifth sierra deserved era all north of 5.5 as well bit of validation for that stink stank stunk single digit k minus walk 53 percent first strike 29 O-swing. Yes, it's a lot of numbers, but it matters, right? He doesn't get the call strikes and whiffs. He's not striking hitters out, and he cannot induce chases. So what does that mean? He's got to force into the zone. Again, a lot of the running themes you see here. Yes, I know I can be very cold analytically, and again, we use a lot of stats, but it's got to tell a story. It should tell a story. This is something I just did at The Athletic in the mailbag. I'm telling you, I just think that's worth a dollar a month right there. But it's about compartmentalizing these statistics. Baseball is a lot, and there's a lot of stats that double count. You don't want to do that. Surface stats, discipline, elevation, batted ball quality. Let it talk to you. Let the stats sing you a tune. So we know Bryce Wilson has to come into the zone. We have a plus 89% in zone contact rate when we start to look at those contact stats. Now, he does keep the ball down, the ground ball rate up above 43. I don't want to misframe it. However, the line drive rate up over 23. Hard hit rate on BIS over 40. That's led to the plus 400 expected Woba on contact and more than one half of a home run per nine. Let's do the lesson today. It's a really good one because I get this one a lot. This transcends it all and i think that really speaks to the kind of work that we're doing here i've got i got into fantasy because i wanted to truly understand the science i already knew the betting side being a professional derivatives trader so you know as i was in myself kind of incorporating all of these things one of the things i noticed immediately getting people in trouble is hard hit rate right hard hit rate makes sense it's very very important we can argue another day about pitcher skill in relation to hard hit rate i would argue it's a function of bad command we can argue that we get to that in the off season if there's time but here's the hard hit rate and why it matters there are two very you know prominent accounting measures for hard hit rate and that's kind of the problem fan graphs and baseball savant that's your stat cast 
They both use hard hit rate, but they mean two different things. So let's do stat cast first. When you hear me say hard hit plus 95, or if you see that on my picture sheet, again, one of the tools that brought to you by me because of Pat, but hard hit 95 is stat cast. That's a raw 95 mile an hour metric, meaning you could smash a ball into the ground and it's 95 miles an hour, it's a hard hit ball. You pop a ball up, if it's over 95 miles an hour, right, you get the point. BIS, that's fan graphs uses a subjective element. There's also some kind of proprietary formula that they don't let us totally see. I have come back tested some of it. For me, it works. Again, I use them in combination because that's the spoiler alert. People ask, well, what's the best one? The best one is always everything because you need nuance and context. But the reason I mention that with Wilson is that 40% BIS hard hit rate is ridiculously high. And the reason I mentioned that is the disparity there, the subjective element. Somebody actually grades these things where he might have seen the pop-up and not graded it a hard hit. He might have seen the worm killer and not graded it a hard hit. So it's very difficult to get high numbers, right? The Savant measure is always going to be higher than the BIS measure. Something to keep in mind always when you're looking at hard hit rates. Last thing on it, because I've heard people say, I think it might have been Bo Bichette. It might have been Vlad Guerrero. It might have been Vlad Guerrero because he hits a lot of ground balls. But he obviously smashed the ball hard. It's not a knock on Vlad. There was a tremendous disparity between the two. So you had one person, you have analyst A, saying Vlad Guerrero's hard hit rate is through the roof. It's this percentile. The other person saying on the next podcast, Vlad Guerrero's hard hit rate is worrisome because it's in the bottom 10%. That was the difference. They were using two different accounting measures, but using the same taxonomy. So, again, be careful with labeling. That's why I try and say hard hit 95 or hard hit BIS, you know, for that reason. Because, again, I, it really means a lot to me to kind of explain this stuff properly. All right. That was a bit of a lesson there. I think that would do it, right? If that doesn't earn a like button, if that doesn't get a like, I don't know what does. I mean, that was just worth it. That was like a piece of information you should be able to use going forward. You could use to your advantage whatever that's kind of what we do i guess it gets spoiled after a while all right let's get a bit to bryce wilson lefties are killing him on the year they have a 352 batting average 625 slug a better than 1100 ops they've also hit seven of the 13 home runs we keep that in mind the seven out of 13 leave six so there's some right-handed stick to go after as well a lot of times when we see the big disparity in splits a lot of times it's 12 of 14 13 of you know 15 home runs so keep an eye on that Bryce Wilson misses in the middle a lot the problem is the fastball right 93 miles an hour not very good 35 use 592 x log because he's constantly missing and again one more piece of nuance of context that you get here at Cork Stats probably nowhere else is the movement right I've been kind of pushing to the fore the idea of the ball in flight and how why this thing matters so much I spoke to Barton Smith and also Carlton and all these people much smarter than me about this stuff and guess what it matters so 17% vertical drop 17 inch I'm sorry 17 inch vertical drop remember less is better steep in steep out well it's steep in it goes steep out he does have a decent amount of arm side run but it hasn't been enough and because he misses with the breaking stuff as well change and the curve both have a plus 600 excellent right so that is not going to help the bad fastball when hitters can almost not say they're not going to sit on the junk but if you miss they will destroy it which has kind of been happening so on the offensive side of the ball give me jake fraley get this this is one of the biggest surprises for me uh, really, uh, maybe the past couple months or so. Check it out. Fraley last 30 days, 50 plate appearances against righties, 85% contact, 11% barrel, 11% blast, all the things we're looking for, and the triple slash, our triple slash, BA ISO OPS, right? ISO counts extra base hits rates, OPS counts walks, which don't count for total base props. So, again, we're trying to do all things to all people, but just keep an eye on why that stuff matters. Does not matter at all to Fraley? 405 BA, 333 ISO, 1185 OPS, 395 X Woba, and 4 Shamalama. Ding dong. Jake Fraley is killing right handed pitching right now. And then give me Jonathan India. I actually answered a question on him on a mailbag. That is what they call a teaser in the business. But last 40 days, been starting to get it. The underpinnings, check it out. 48 plate appearance against righties, 76% contact, 9.5 barrel, right? 289, 333, 956, triple slash, and four home runs. So the underpinnings are there, right? The hard hit rate is there, the contact is there, the barrel rate is there, and the bad pitcher is there. We also know the skill is there. India coming off the IL, I believe, you know, there's a there's an injury arc coming. So I was just, when it comes to players in that situation, very good hitters that were, let's say, hurt. 
when they start to show you the other pitting stuff, when they start to barrel it up, you kind of get behind them, especially in a very good matchup. We know it's going to be at the top of the line. It's going to be Fraley and India for the Reds. And next up, we want a couple of those Gigantes, the San Francisco Treats, going up against Jose Ureña in cores. 4-8 ERA, 1-6 whip, 7-99 OPS. But the FIP, Sierra, and expected ERA or north of five and a half. So I'm not even buying the 4.8 ERA, which isn't very good in the first place. Well, why? 11.9% K. I don't usually use decimals, but you'll see why. 11.5% walk. For all you math majors out there, that's a 0.4% K minus walk. That is just ridiculous and not palatable. The Rockies, I understand it's hard to pitch in cores. Why have they surrendered? Why does it seem like every other organization is trying to collect young arms, looking for prospects in them? The Rockies are just okay being terrible. Uh, it's it's so bad. Put me in charge of that. I will add wins to this team. I bet your bottom dollar, but they just don't care. 22% CSW, 93%. Z-Con, what's it mean? Arranger doesn't get cold strikes and whiffs. He's not fooling anybody. And the end zone contact rate is ridiculously high. 89 is an issue. 90 we target. 91, 92, you keep Go and come up with your own words for it. When you get to 93, that's what we're going after. We have another one here. This is similar to uh, Bryce Wilson. The high ground ball rate, but, 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 the big shaking butt, 22 line drive, plus 5% blast. So, of course, remember, there are times we're going to be separating barrel and blast. Again, it's a function of the poor control led to the nearly 380 expected wobble on the year. He's just gotten ripped up by lefties. They have a 324 BA, 866 OPS. Those are really hyper-focused at home. The OPS is north of 907 of the home runs on the season given to lefties at home. So this is like the worst spot for him, and we're going to go get it. Why is that? Well, he's hyper using a sinker that's not very good. 53% use on the sinker. So what's that mean if we were doing the scouting report today for our Gigantes? Guess what, fellas? Just sit. Sinker, it's coming. He's not very good, right? He doesn't get cold strikes because he's not good with his breaking stuff. All right, we're going to get it to sinker today. Only 14% whiff. It has a 329 expected BA. Think about the math there. He's going to throw a pitch more than half the time. With a 93% contact rate, that is a 325 expected batting average. What do you get? We're going to get a carousel today. Right? So even if it's not like dong, 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 we should be racking up bases like crazy. Give me Lamont Wade. Last two weeks, 28 plate appearances against righties. 45 hard hit at 95 miles an hour. 28% barrel, 19% blast. He is smoking hot right now. 280, 680, 1283 OPS. Oh, my God. Hachi, Machi, Liberace. Five home runs for Lamont. And he's leading off against righties. And this is really one of the true sources of edge right now when it comes to total base play when it comes i wouldn't say daily play because daily right daily doesn't get locked until the end so this is one of the ones where not so much for DraftKings, not so much for jock market because by the time it goes live the lineups are out but this is truly the edge for total base props for your single plays the books are not on these. I don't understand why. They do not properly adjust for the split lineups. Again, if guys, you're afraid. The books are not putting these bets out. Just hire me. We could smooth these lines out and make, like a, make it more better for everybody, right? We could just improve the whole game. Yes, it sucks for some of the betters. The lines will come out sharp. But I'll, put the, I'll have them twisting their elbows to put these bets out early the way they should. That's your function as a book is to serve the market. And then the challenge is to defeat them and to beat them with your pricing and on volume and on vig i just can't believe it man that my phone lines are open all right everybody lamont wade gonna get it done we'll get to him circle back to him in a little bit and give me mike yastrzemski last two weeks 32 plate appearance against righties 207 379 867 with five extra base hits let's stop it right there so the 207 batting average probably a bit frightening we're not going to be looking at him for a single we're not going to be looking at him for total base props because he's also hitting at the back of the lineup right these things matter even though the giants are are on the road something i also like to circle because we really want to lock in that ninth frame okay do not look past that it matters now granted if you're implying such a high total like they are i've seen my own applied team totals it's over six today for san francisco especially as bad as colorado bullpen has been he's going to get the extra bats i wouldn't let that disclude me from starting giants right but understand there's always weights on the scale and i think that's why this show matters to a lot of people and now i'm looking at it and i spelled the last name wrong and jock peterson is now jock 
Perterson, but if Jock Perterson gets a dunk for us, I don't care. We we'll call him Pac Jeterson. Nobody cares as long as he gets across the finish line. Oh, I wanted to finish up on Yaz real quick. Sorry, I got caught my own, hoisted by my own petard. The thing with Yaz, now the underpinning stats, if you're making the list, you're saying, well, how, why do you make it? The underpinning stats are phenomenal. In that same two-week span, 32 plate appearances, 53 hard hit at 95, 26 barrel, 21 blast. I wrote with a star, results are coming. So keep an eye on Yastrzemski. He's a guy you want to backfill into DraftKings, DFS, FanDuel, that kind of standard daily play. We'll also be looking for him if he's cheap in jock market. But so again, it's weights on the scale, weights on the scale, weights on the scale, and why these things... The, Highlighting the player is really becoming like lower on the priority list as understanding where to place it more than anything. And then let's get up into Jock Pergerson, who, again, remember, we highlighted the hyper use of the sinker, 53% use, and it's getting damaged. So Jock, even though he's cold, we love hot hitter, very good hitters that have a stain on them, let's say. You know, the public is really into last stats. You can basically track the pricing and ownership and drop market pricing all to last seven, last 14. So when we get good hitters in these really good spots, check it out. This is where, you know, Jock butters his bread against right-handed sinkers. Year to date, 92 contact, 65 hard hit, 29 barrel, 15 blast, and four home runs. So Jock is in the spot today that we want him. He also is going to bat second, right? Another piece of the calculus. So that will do it for the Gigantes. Then last up, we got the Redbirds and the Devil Magic from St. Louis. They have um, Tommy Hunter. I'm sorry, it's, I want to just make sure. It's, that was in the desert, right? They're in Arizona. I want to make sure I have them last, but sometimes I get confused. I want to make sure I didn't spell one out wrong. So it's the Cardinals at Arizona. And Tommy Hunter, let's, let's take a look, okay? He only has three games started. This is Hunter. It's 17 innings pitched. He went five. He gave up four. Not very good. He went seven, he gave up one. That was Pittsburgh. He went five and a third, gave up three. So you get a 4.15 ERA, 1-2-1 one, one whip, which I think is a bit misleading. The XFIP expected ERA north of five and a half, though if you follow my tools and my work, when innings limits are that low, I try not to even put up this season stats. I think I may have today for Hunter because I'm lazy, you know, but it, it's not what we want to be looking at, right? Oh, let's go underpinnings. One and a half percent came on his walk, something that plays across the board. That's not going to play. You came with a double digit walk rate, and I look back, he has a track record of double digit walk rate. He's not been a big home run guy in the mind or something to look for, but it has been over one. Again, you're giving up a home run per nine in the minors. You almost double these things. I wish I, that might be a good idea. I got to put that on the whiteboard. I wonder if we could reverse engineer that year over year minor or um, major, you know, home run rate. But we'll table that for now. The problem is the fastball, right? So let's get into it. He's throwing a fastball 54% of the time, so it's definitely worth taking a look. It's just under 92 miles an hour. I got 91.7. So far, it's it's pitched, you know, he has not gotten touched. 332 X-Log, which is phenomenal for fastball, right? So again, I'm not here misframing anything. This is like, oh, I use stats and no one understands because I'm trying to trick you. That's not the case whatsoever. High usage, super high usage, okay? Anything, oh, like 25 is primary... 30 is featured, 40 is extreme, 50 is hyper use, right? So we got a hyper usage of a straight fastball. Hitters are going to be sitting on it. The underpinning is not great. The diagnostics, I'm sorry, Jay. 18 inches of vertical ride. That's almost, I don't want to say unacceptable, but that's really, really bad. I'm surprised it hasn't gotten smoked the way it has. But again, it's only been a couple of batted ball events. So 18-inch vertical ride, 6.5 horizontal run. Neither of those is very good. Remember, you're looking for 12 or flatter on the V. You're looking for 9 or greater on the H. So he's at least like 30, 40, 50% worse than where he should be on those as far as the fastball diagnostics go. So I think he's going to be in trouble. Give me Dylan Carlson. Last 90 days against lefties, Hunter's a lefty. 64 plate appearances, 362 batting average. Love that. 224, 1,000 OPS and 9 extra base hits. And he'll be leading off against lefties. You see, he bats like 7th against righties. And because righties are the majority of pitchers, he gets pegged as a back of the lineup hitter. However, he bats first against lefties. It's like, you know, in shifted up a piece. He's the leadoff. He is the leadoff hitter for the Cardinals against left handed pitchers. And that's not reflected in the pricing. So, again, whenever we get these guys in good spots, that's where we want to be. Give me Paul DeJong since he got the call. 
back up. 16 plate appearance against lefties. I don't know it's small, but he's killing it. 37% bow rate. 385, 231, 11, 15 OPS. Remember, ISO at 231 means a 23.1% extra base hit rate. He's right on the cusp. That's why I mentioned that, right? If you're right at 25%, you're hoping for four at bats to get the total bases. The line of placement scares me a little bit, but he is on the road. They also have the employee team total. So, like, sometimes I don't always have the fit of answer. DeJong ended up right on the borderline. 400 X Woba in that span. And then the old man, long in the tooth. I mean, this is just cartoonish. I owe Albert Pujols an apology. He was one of my favorite players. You probably tell why. Like, I love the blue-collar star. Like, that's my thing. He's awesome. He was a machine, 300 hitter with the power. But then I just always trash. I get really overpaid and hurt and whatever. Now I'm sorry. <laughs> Last 30 days, 25 plate appearance against lefties for Pujols. 90 contact, 65 hard hit, 20% barrel. Every one of them a blast. The triple slash is straight-up cartoonish. 500, 636, 1696. For a 566, 565 expected Woba in four home runs. I mean, Pujols has found the fountain of use against lefties. He's up to something, right? So they, listen, he's doing it. We know he's a really good hitter, and they have really focused on that. He just must be hyper-focusing on picking up release points and stuff. So, wow, we're at 20 minutes, and we're still in the first pillar of profit. I'm going to blow through the fantasy end. The Friday show has been a bit here and there, and I guess for that I'm sorry. You know, I like to be very regimented and very templated. Monday's been very good. We do the injury news looking back. Tuesday and Wednesday, mining the leaderboard has been very good to us. And then Thursday, the waiver show. And Friday's been a bit a bit here or there. So what I did have for you was something I know I'm going to be doing because I'm setting Friday lineups for NFBC was I just marked the handful of players I went through the entire league and marked a handful of players that are experiencing a playing time drop-off. So these are players that are healthy and might be easy to leave on your in an active lineup in a 15-team league, right? So you just hear some of the names. They're not all great. I'm just These are players that were playing and now are not. Keep those names in mind. I know I will. And to shift them down because, again, some of them it's easy to play. All right, here we go. Gavin Sheets for the White Sox was playing. He's not anymore. Nolan Jones for the Guardians, that one really hurts. I, he's been good too, but so he's like a daily play, but right now you can't the fantasy is not a star. Aaron Hicks, finally the Yankees have had enough. He's not playing right now. Sky Bolt for the A's, no one really cares about that. But I'm starting with draft champions. That's what it, you know, that's what draft champions is if you're unfamiliar. I encourage it because I help, think it helps to keep you very sharp throughout the offseason, but it's fifty rounds and you draft these things in like January. So you know, fifty round draft in January. No one has any idea what's gonna happen. But I had Sky Bolt, right? I thought Oakland was gonna be terrible and sell off and he would get a look, and he did, and he was playing and actually producing a little bit for Roto, but he's out again. Uh Isak Paredes for the Rays with low back. He just hasn't played. Uh, Kevin Biggio for the Blue Jays. He was playing every day. Made the waiver sheet. He's out. Marcel Ozuna, out. Robbie Grossman bumped him out. Rafael Ortega for the Cubs. He was at least getting the strong side platoon. Now he's not, right? So Ortega, out. Trace Thompson for the Dodgers. He got a call up, was playing every single day and producing. You're out. Garrett Cooper for the Marlins. Now this one's interesting because he was hurt. And it's been spotty since coming back, and I wonder if he will get playing time. So uh, I wouldn't be drop. The rest of these guys are pretty much drops. I don't think I would drop Cooper if I if I if I could, because I do think he I think he's going to play. I'm not not sure, but we want to see that one. I think that one is TBD to be determined. And then Mikel Franco again. Nobody really cares about that, but he was playing. And if you need a CI or a third base in a fifty round draft, you play Mikel Franco, right? You know, it's going to be stubborn. All righty. So hopefully, I think even though it was only a minute or two, hopefully that was like as useful as mem- you know stammering about something else. Because I know, yeah, I would have to set. You know, I try not to overdo it. I probably have ten draft champions, maybe like five or six fab leagues, and it could be a lot. You know, you're going to set nearly twenty lineups on a Friday. Luckily, today's only one early game. Sometimes there's a couple of early games, and you're really scrambling. So. That's the stuff that matters when you're kind of fast. You got to be careful. That was a mistake that I made. That's the last lesson for fantasy. Is I used to get stung I'm, I, again. I was a high stakes point player. I've always been a handicapper. So now I make the move into as an analyst, making the move into NFBC, right? To kind of the premier platform where Roto is at the fore, where it's not just about player analysis. Well, like I put my player, I think my player analysis is as good as anybody maybe in the country. You know, I'm, I'm literally, I don't care. I'm gonna go out, put that in public, and I'll also tell you that I'm not that good at Roto baseball yet. You know, because I've yet to kind of figure out some of the new, more nuanced pieces of the puzzle. 
uh, the steals and average, namely like wins and saves, and these things that are not necessarily related to player analysis. Like I said, the, figuring out how to put the puzzle together, and then managing lineups where these players are extremely sharp. I want to have tip a couple of my dudes out there. Listen, you want to get good, you talk to the best. I just happen to have access to a couple of national champions, right? So Rob DiPietro and my boy Zach Waxman follow both at Deadpool Hitter and at Roto Doctor. Um, you know, these guys are super sharp, man, and you know, just watch them, right? So here, I'm kind of, when it comes to handicapping, right, I'm more the teacher. When I'm talking to them, I'm more of a student, watch, just kind of watching how they operate, and you really got a lot of that. Maximizing plate appearances is really at the fore, is something that they're always, always, always doing, and staying on top of who's in and when, and not just looking past the healthy player, and that really has been kind of determining for myself. You know, I've been much better than before. I actually feel representative. Like, here I'm an analyst for the show. And I'm like, I'm not very good at Roto. But it's a very hard game. And again, I'll play any of these people in point leagues and be extreme. Put money on it, you know. and put money on myself to win outside of the league fee. All right, so that's two out of three pills of profit. Meatloaf would say that. Two out of three ain't bad. All right, let's do the first looks. This one's going to be kind of fun. We're going to start at the bottom and I'll work my way up for the audio-only listeners Let's go with Jake Fraley over one and a half total bases. That one is at plus 120. Absolutely love it. We mentioned the 50 plate appearances, double digit barrel, double digit blast, 405 batting average, 333 ISO, right? So the 33% ISO, that's the next level. We're hoping one out of three, 33%, one out of three plate appearances against righties will get him that extra base hit. Plus, he's on the road. I believe there'll be slight favorites. I like Ashcraft over Wilson. So I. Think the Reds will win, but as the road team, they'll get the ninth frame. And again, fairly near the top of the lineup, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to look at it right now. Sorry, I don't normally do this to you people, but it matters. Yeah, he's leading off. I don't know what I was. I should have wrote that. I knew that. Jake Fraley has led off the last four games against righties. Ding, I'm such a ding dong sometimes. Very hard. I'm always moving a mountain of data. Jake Fraley, that's, I'm glad though I got to it. That's why this one got circled for the oh, one and a half total base. And I think, let that speak to you with how strict I've been with the gauntlet of filters. Right, so he checks all the box. And the price, oh my God, my own, me, yeah. Beautiful. Plus 120, we're going to smash that one. Lead off double from Fraley off Wilson. Give me 120, smash it. Put it in the bank. Then we have a base hit parlay. Love that. Both of the players that I mentioned are doing what? Going to be leading off. Give me Dylan Carson and Lamont Wade. We covered them both already briefly. <clears throat> Wade, 280 batting average last 14 days against righties, 1283 OPS. You know, we love that. Dylan Carlson also leading off against lefties. You know, 362 batting average against lefties last 90 days. We'll take that. They were both at minus 250, so that comes right in at even money. Love even money for even money for the single base hit pop. I get a little like nah, sour taste in my mouth when these start to get into the negative. I'm gonna have to work on that and see how that maybe fits into the calculus but for right now lead off hitters minus 250 or better that make a plus 100 yes 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 yes, yes. so we're we love both of these spots we're on the road in both spots so we're getting the ninth frame we are the favorite we are the lead off hitter this is a smash spot for all of these la, 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 love them and if you like you can probably mix frailly into the mix also and trip them up or you know split this one that's been the most successful players have been doing that now into my favorite thing Right now, these F5 team total, oh, 1.5. I love these. Man, we did miss the Royals yesterday. That one kind of stunk. Uh, Patino did his thing. I didn't see it, though. So I didn't, like, see all the stats and stuff. I don't even know if they hit him hard. The Royals offense is not very good. You know, we were hoping for a spike. We didn't get it. But I, anytime there's a man on base, Patino gives up home runs. There's a chance they're going to cash this thing. You know, we just didn't get it. But then the... Parlay did get it, and it's over 200. So what does that mean? You make a money. You make a money on these things. Two runs. We got them in the first inning. It's ridiculous, yo. Ridiculous. Toronto yesterday in Pittsburgh. I mean, Toronto offense is so good. It's so good. Why are they one and a half? They should at least be a two. Pittsburgh fine is a one and a half team, but we picked right up on it. Who? Winkowski? No problem. Spanked him. For two, Pirates won the game, and I'm a sucker because my algo was screaming to bet that one. Seriously, people out there, don't be afraid to tag me and remind It's not even remind me, but this happens. I'm doing so much work. I love when people do that. I go, dude, you didn't. What about this one? Yeah, sometimes we wanted. Sometimes we wanted. The overs that scream. You got to hit them. 
the, you got you got to get it, man. Reading the sheet, understanding to speak the language, like the analysis itself, is at the fore. All right, let's get into it today. We had a bit more of the same. So we got the Blue Jays and the Rangers. All right, Blue Jays going up against Kevin Gaussman. Um, I'm sorry, Jameson Tyon. They have Gaussman going for the Blue Jays. This is Blue Jays up against James and Tyon. 395 ERA, 113 whip. Oh, pretty good. But like Sierra, deserved ERA, classified run average, all north of four. Single digit swing strike rate, 89% in zone contact rate. See, now that's the issue when you're going to face Toronto. Is there a, a very good team? Then the contact that they make is very good. He's allowed one and a third home runs per nine, 390 expected wall on contact, right? So there's the high contact rate leading to the high damage rate. Why are the Blue Jays at one and a half? I don't know. Let's get them, baby. I don't I don't know. Maybe I wonder if I have to start like eating juice for these. These are coming in at like minus 130, minus 135, which is just when I start to get a bit nauseous. But I do love to pair them. But I also understand uh, parlaying is dangerous. But right now we're crushing because I really do believe we have identified a bit of edge. And again, if you want to see it for yourself, you know, check it out on Twitter. All the links are there. You'll take it to Patreon, but you're not paying for nothing. It's free Tron for you and me, Tron, and maybe more than anything, right? That's the big thank you to Pat because when this ends, you know, I don't know where the tools are going to go. I know I'm not going to be doing them for nothing, you know, I mean, that's what it is. But we thank him because he's been doing all this. It's starting pitcher sheet and ply team totals. I run the algo. You get everything, every single thing. I run the lines against the book. You go figure it out for yourself. Everything's conditional formatted with daily rankings and stuff. It's so ridiculous. We're just really killing it this season. I'm very, very proud of the work that we've done. And from the response, I know people are digging it. Right, so point being this, I run the F5 model against the F5 team totals, and whenever you get a grade of over one, I have a key up top, you kind of just basically go for it. I don't like to pay juice, pair them, get them all. They're all they're hitting at a they're hitting at a clip that the book is gonna change how they operate. They're either gonna disallow parlays or start juicing the hell out of these things, 1.5 or move to two flat, open the door for a push, because we're just kicking their teeth in constantly. Then last note on Tyon. I don't know. He gave up two home runs in eight of his last ten. And he's got the Blue Jays. And he has a 90% contact rate. Like, he's giving up two runs to the Blue Jays. And I love the Yankees. It's uh, right there on my shirt. And then we want the Rangers as well. The Rangers offense. You know, they could be a bit spotty. So that I get. I've kind of rolled with them. But they've been very good. Last 260 plate appearances. 275 Team BA. 360 Team OBP. Leading the league in hard hit rate. I'm sorry. Top three in hard hit rate. Via Statcast, it's a 330 wall, but 118 WRC plus, and they're going up against Dylan Bundy. He gave BAS. He scored four touchdowns with poke high. That was forever ago. It was like 35 years ago, maybe more, 50 years ago. He's given up two run runs, five of his last six. Dylan Bundy is not very good. I mean, I, are we really doing this? Are we really, really doing this? Making me defend Dylan Bundy? Well, let's just get at him. The ERA at 4.75. All the earn run indicators north of 4.5. The K rate down below 18%. The whiff rate down below 22. The fly ball rate up over 44 and the bow rate over nine that's why you got almost one and a half home runs per nine i, I don't know i think bundy's in trouble and i also had a note on him bundy's right two and runs five of the last six so we have good offenses in good spots against not great pitchers looking for two runs for five innings i mean Bloop and a blast. That's it. It's Johnny's bloop and a blast. Paul A. Give me the Blue Jays and the Rangers plus 181. Give me Dylan Carlson and Lamont Wade to get a base hit for plus 100. Give me Jake Fraley over one and a half total bases at plus 120. And that will do it for the big show and the big man. Please, please, please download the Jock Market app. That's the best way to say thanks using the MMM code, MMN code. Match that first 100 bucks of free in Jock Market. See you up in the Jock Market streets later on. You know the Cardinals are going to be juiced to heck. We're going to have to probably find other players. But I'm really feeling very confident about the betting side right now. And again, I don't think it's much of a coincidence. As I've kind of gotten the production out of the way, where I've gotten much better at templating all the graphics, as we're putting more time into the work, and now it's shifted into a perceived edge. Really, probably no surprise. I'm expecting a very strong finish here in these last, whatever, 11 days or so that we have left. Gosh, this show was just so much fun. Rate, review, and subscribe to the audio-only pod and give me that cartoon finger. Not sure there's another show out there bringing it like this, including the boys up in Bristol. Rooms full of producers. Rooms full of writers. 
rooms full of key grips and all these other types of helpers, and we're doing it with a fraction of it, with a magnitude of the energy, because we love it, and we love you. Enjoy your games, enjoy your day, when we're done with the book, enjoy that pay, homies. Man, when you work this hard, it feels so much less like luck. Enjoy your weekend, man. Peace. <laughs>